Anna, mm. I want to be famous. Me too. What can we do that's going to make us famous? Mm. <gasps> Are you thinking what I'm thinking? I think so. Backflips! Back All right. I'll, I'll give you a lift and then you do the flip. Sounds good. All right. This is going to get so many likes. I can't We're going to be so famous. Okay, go. One, two. Girl, oh, stop, oh, stop. What are you doing? Amy, we're trying to get famous. But and what you're doing is dangerous. But I want to be the greatest. I want to have so many likes. I want everyone to know who I am. And I want to be a celebrity. <laughs> TV. We're here with season two, episode two, and we're so happy you could join us. Today, we're going to learn that God is the greatest. In the Bible, some people wanted to be famous and they wanted to do great things. And we're going to learn a bit more about that in our story today. But it's not so bad being famous. The only problem is that the people in the Bible wanted to be famous instead of pointing to God's greatness. And he didn't like that. So let's see what happened in our Bible story today. Bible is one way that God shows His greatness. Before we get started, I just want to give a great shout out to Grace Childcare for painting this awesome backdrop behind us. Thank you. Today, we're going to learn that God is the greatest. We'll see that the people in the Bible story wanted to be the greatest. They wanted to be famous. It seems like these days, anyone can become famous. You don't have to be rich or have connections to earn fame. With YouTube and other sites on the internet, any one of us could be famous overnight. Let's think about that. If I became famous, I'd want it to be for... That's easy, Amy. Backflips! Mm, or eating the most pie. Mm. Oh, that's a good one. Mm, that sounds yummy. <laughs> well, probably not backflips for me. But let's think about that actually. What happened when Myrna and Ranya were trying to do a backflip earlier on? How were they acting? Did it seem like they were trying to get a lot of attention? What did it take for them to get that attention? Since we saw that Myrna and Ranya were trying to get a lot of attention, it seemed that the focus was more on themselves than on others. And that's what happens when we try to be the greatest. Our focus is on me, me, me. We want everyone to pay attention to us. So let's explore why God is the greatest and we don't need to be. We can keep our focus on Him. Let's see what the people in the Bible wanted to be famous for. I'm going to read from the book of Genesis chapter 11 verse 1 to 4. Now the whole earth had one language and one speech. And it came to pass as they journeyed from the east that they found the plain in the land of Shinar, and they dwelt there. 
Then they said to one another, Come, let us make bricks and bake them thoroughly. They had brick for stone, and they had asphalt for mortar. And they said, Come, let us build ourselves a city, and a tower whose top is in the heavens. Let us make a name for ourselves, lest we be scattered abroad over the face of the whole earth. So it seems like the people in the Bible wanted to make a really, really high tower so that they could become famous. So girls, I'm going to challenge you. Ooh, you're ready. Do you think you two would be able to make a tower using some newspaper and sticky tape? That's yeah, easy. Definitely. Okay, I'll leave it to you then. Let's see what you can make. All right, Mona, how should we start? I think we should start by scrunching up the newspaper really tightly mm -hmm. we can use them as bricks oh that's a good idea and then we can build on top yes and we'll use the tape to stick them together good idea Renee. all right let's should we get started let's do it okay maybe they can go around and then we'll go on top yes good okay. idea okay wait pause Stop what you're doing. Something happened as the builders in the Bible were seeking fame. God saw what they were doing and he didn't like it. So I'm going to limit the way you're building the tower the same way that God did. So this time you can only build the tower using your pinky fingers and you can't talk to each other. What? <laughs> no talking. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this looks really hard. <laughs> okay. Do you think you've had enough now, girls? You can talk. <sighs> that was really hard. What was hard about it? Well, we couldn't discuss how we were going to do it. And then these fingers are way too small to do anything. My fingers were hurting and I couldn't tell where to put the sticky tape and I couldn't even scrunch this up yeah, properly. Yeah, you couldn't even rip the tape. That's not going anywhere, this tower. That doesn't <laughs> look like a tower at all. No. Mm -mm. So you couldn't talk to one another and you couldn't build it either. Mm -mm. As I said, God didn't like why they were doing what they were doing, trying to be famous. So he decided to confuse the builders by making them speak different languages. That would make it harder to build a great tower together. God limited the builders by confusing their languages. And that's what happened here with the ladies. Let's see how the Bible Times builders reacted when God confused their language. I'm going to read from the book of Genesis chapter 11 verse 8 to 9. So the Lord scattered them abroad from there over the face of all the earth, and they ceased building the city. Therefore its name is called Babel, because there the Lord confused the language of all the earth, and from there the Lord scattered them abroad over the face of all the earth. You know, there was another time when God changed the languages. It's called the Day of Pentecost, and actually, we just celebrated the Feast of Pentecost in our church. We did too, and the Day of Pentecost was when the Holy Spirit came down from God, and it was a big wind, and tongues of fire came down on them, on the disciples, and that's when they learnt different languages, or were able to speak different languages, and that helped them preach the Word of God. Yes, and didn't they use those new languages to spread the Word abroad? What a magnificent day. Wow. God is the greatest and we don't need to be. But this story is a little confusing, so let's talk about it. Based on this story, do you think being famous is a bad thing? Hmm. I think it is to be a bad thing based on this story because they were using it for their own glory. Hmm. Hmm, that makes sense. Okay. What about if you were famous, what could you do to help people see that God is the greatest? even greater than you. Well, I guess one way we can do that is to thank God for all the gifts that He gives us. That's beautiful. Another thing that's confusing about this story is that 
God didn't want people to work together, mm. but usually we encourage you to work well with others. So when can unity be a bad thing? Mm. Just thinking about it, sometimes when we exclude other people and we leave them out, that's when unity can be a bad mm. thing. That's not nice at all. No, it's mm. very hurtful. When we remember that God is the greatest, we don't focus on people. We focus on God. We don't know all the details of what the people in the Bible did wrong, but we do know that they wanted to make a name for themselves. It seems like their focus was on themselves and not on God. When we do our best and work with others to do good things, we can still focus on God and point to how He's the greatest. And when we don't do things perfectly, we can let go and trust God because we know He's the greatest. What's one way you can point to God instead of yourself this week? Hmm, I think giving thanks to God for getting you through the difficult times and knowing that it was Him that got you through that. Definitely, that's a good one. Well, I think when I accomplish something, I can always remember that it's the gifts of God that helped me to accomplish that. Very true. And I think it might be a good idea to talk about God with the people you love this week. Welcome to our object lesson. Today we've got a really fun activity to do, but I need to remind you that you have to have an adult with you, just so that nothing goes wrong and no messes are made. So let's start with our supplies. You're going to need some measuring equipment, some plastic cups, bicarb soda, vinegar, food colouring, that's optional but it's a lot more fun, and a paper plate so that you don't make a mess. Okay, so do you want to jump right in? Yes, sure. I love this. So we'll just use our plates so we don't get too messy. Mm -hmm. So what are we going to do, Amy? So combining vinegar and baking soda makes a great reaction. Ooh. But don't take my word for it. Let's experiment and see for ourselves. I can't wait. Okay, sounds good. We're going to start first with the drop of the blue food colouring. It's up to you. Cool. You can I use any colour you like. Right. Okay. Next, so I've put the baking soda in here just so it doesn't get too messy. It's the same one as this. Okay, I'm going to add a tablespoon of this. Alright, I wonder what's going to happen. Is the vinegar next? Yes it is. Alright, let's do it. What's going to happen? Ooh. I don't know, is it going to explode? Mm, I hope not. <laughs> I don't like the smell of vinegar. <laughs> Alright, do I just pour it in? Yep. All right, is everyone ready? Good luck. Ready. Okay. Oh, oh, oh my gosh. Ah. Lucky we had our plates. I know, that would have been a big mess. Wow, That's overflowing. Cool, Amy. That's awesome. Look at those bubbles. They're going away so quickly. Mm, they they smell. are. It's dying really quickly. But it was a really good reaction at first. It was cool. Mm. Well, <laughs> <laughs> you made some great reactions, but now they're dying out. Let's hmm. see if we can make an even greater reaction with foam that doesn't dissolve so quickly. Oh. We'll need one more ingredient, a secret ingredient that I've kept over here. Ready to find out what it is? Drum roll! <laughs> dun, dun, dun. Detergent! Oh. <laughs> Something you can <laughs> find at home! That's all! So we're going to see how when we redo this experiment and add our secret ingredient, what the difference is. Ooh. Ready? Good. Okay. Okay. It smells lovely. So, food colouring again? Yep. Okay. Another tablespoon. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Is it baking soda or vinegar next? It's the vinegar. So, you're going to mix that in in a separate cup with your detergent. Oh, okay. Yep. In a separate cup, we're not going to add the vinegar just yet because mm -hmm. we're going to use our secret ingredient. Okay. You and might need now we'll, add, we'll use a spoon to add our detergent in. Give it a mix. I can't wait to see this. Me too. Oh, look it's at the colour. Green or blue? Ooh. That's odd. There's still some on the spoon, so I'm just going to mix well so that it can all come off. Okay, that's some dishy vinegar. Ooh. Ready? Okay. 
Mm. Look how thick they are. Oh, look at those mm. bubbles. Bubsica. Whoa. It's pouring out. So looks like blue bubbles. lava. It really does. I want to touch it. <laughs> so this time it's coming out a lot slower and lasting longer, it looks like. Look how thick they are. <laughs> Yep, it's this one's good. still going. Yeah, look, they're still here. That one's gone. Hmm. So, there was a bit of a difference. Yeah. Hmm. Let's compare the reactions without dish soap and with dish soap. What's different? Well, definitely the bubbles are much more. They're lasting longer. Mm -hmm. So, thick. They're still going. So, the reactions were great without dish soap, but they disappeared before we knew it. They're completely gone. When we added the dish soap, the reactions became even bigger and lasted longer. So, how is God like the dish soap in our experiment? Maybe when we add God to everything we're doing, when we remember that God is the greatest, He makes all our efforts last longer. Yeah, and He keeps us together. See, with this one, the bubbles are all gone. Rania, I think this cup is you and I when we were at the beginning when we were trying to <laughs> do backflips yeah. and get famous <laughs> for, for our ourselves. Own reason, yeah. well, lucky we had Amy to stop us. <laughs> <laughs> well, in our Bible story, people were trying to build the greatest tower on their own, but they left God out of the process. We may be able to do some great things on our own, but God is the greatest. When we depend on Him and His greatness, He'll help us to do amazing things that point to His greatness. Hi, we're going to try something new today. Mm, so, we're going to play a game. Okay. <gasps> Are you ready, girls? Mm -hmm. okay. I'm going to win. Okay. <laughs> we'll see. The builders of Babel wanted to build the best city with the tallest tower mm. to be known for what they built. So, we're going to play a game where Myrna and Rania are going to have to make the best creations using these Legos, Ooh. okay? But there's a small catch. <gasps> when I tell you what you have to build, you could only use 15 pieces max. No more than that. That should be good. You up for it? Yep. Okay, well, you have a little bit of time now to collect your 15 pieces, and then I'll tell you what the first thing you're building is. Okay. okay. Good luck. Hey! <laughs> okay, a good mix of pieces there. That's a good idea. Some long ones, some short ones. Hmm. Well, if we're building something really tall, mm -hmm. I think I'm going to need more of these long ones. We'll find out. Make sure you're not going past 15. How many do you have so far? I don't know. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Okay. So 13, four left. Fourteen and no. And fifteen. So Myrna, you're ready with fifteen? I sure am. Okay. I think I get one more. All right. Okay. I'm ready. So, the first thing that you're both going to be building is a giraffe. Ooh, <laughs> okay. okay. Good luck, because I wouldn't okay. know how to make a giraffe from Lego. Okay. Let's see what they do. Well, giraffes have really long necks. And really long legs, so mm -hmm. hopefully oh. this is enough. Okay, so are they the legs right now? Yeah, but I think they need to be a little bit longer. What do you think? Okay, now for the neck. Whoa. Oh, Very oh see, it's a giraffe. He has a long neck. Wow, that is a really long neck. And his head. I'm done. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Good. Well, we can see the differences here. Look at this long <laughs> neck. And uh, Myrna, I don't really know what that is. I ran out of Lego. <laughs> you ran out of Lego. <laughs> I win. <laughs> safe, I think safe. Rania wins this one. Would you mind putting your drive over here so sure. everyone can see? Uh-oh. 
Did you like this one? Here you go. Maybe you can see it better now. I love it. Okay, ready for the next sure. creation? <laughs> oh, Myrna is really getting ready now. I want to win this one. Hey! <laughs> Maybe no. there's someone at home you can play this with too. <laughs> so, I'll give you some time to find 15 pieces 15 again. again. 15 <laughs> And then I'll tell you what you're building. Okay? Okay. Alright, good luck. Go for it. I'm ready. Pick up all my pieces that you threw. <laughs> Sorry about that. Mm. Oh, different pieces this time. But we're going to be building something tall. Hmm. Okay. I love this. Imagine you had a neck this long. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh oh. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, make sure you're not overcounting. This is different. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Myrna, do you have fifteen? I sure do. Myrna's ready. ready to go. Thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Okay. Okay. You both have fifteen pieces. That's great. So now what you're going to both be building is a rocket ship. Ooh. <laughs> okay. Okay. Good luck. Hmm. A rocket ship. May the best <laughs> astronaut win. Are you scared right now? I don't know. <laughs> wow, Myrna is on a roll. I don't know if I know what a rocket ship looks like. So it's that thing that goes into space, Rania. Yeah. It's hard to build out of Lego. <laughs> okay, I can kind of see a rocket ship forming when I look at Myrna's design over there. <laughs> Done. R Done? Oh. That was quick. Okay, can I have a look? Sure. Oh, okay, so that's the top. <laughs> Do you want to land score. on there, Amy? <laughs> and back on Earth. Oh, wow. That looks great. That looks um, great, But guys, Myrna. what about mine? What um, about yours? <laughs> no? Okay. That's I okay. tried. I tried my best. Yeah, you've done good. <laughs> We've got one good giraffe, thanks to Rania, <laughs> and one great rocket ship, thanks to Myrna. So, what was it like, girls? to have your creation picked as the best one. Well, I was pretty happy when you chose my giraffe. I mean, look at it. <laughs> did you like winning and being the best? I did. Sure did. Yeah, it was probably a good feeling. What's something you would want to be the best for in your life? It's human to want to be the best, but we can get stuck focusing on ourselves. The people of Babel did that, so God confused them and changed their focus. We don't need to worry so much about being the best or the greatest because God is the greatest. Here's something to think about. When someone is too proud or conceited, we say that that person has a big head. Why do you think we use that expression? Well, maybe because they're focused just on themselves, their mind is full of them, me, 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 and their head just gets bigger and bigger and bigger and up, <laughs> bigger. <laughs> That's true. Also, because it's so big, there's no room to think about anyone else but themselves. Mm, that's a good point, Myrna. Mm. I think this will help us to understand better. Mm. What's that you got there, Anya? It's a balloon. But let's imagine that this balloon is a person. I think we should call him Johnny. I like that name. Mm. Mm. I think we should call him Myrna. <laughs> me. Okay, yeah, okay. Myrna. <laughs> All right. So, Myrna is famous. Myrna has done a lot of awesome things and she wants everyone to know that she's the greatest. So let's make up some things that Myrna has done. Hmm. Okay. Well, her head's already pretty big because she's oh, famous no. and everyone knows she's the greatest. <laughs> okay, I'll stop. Myrna's won four trophies just this year. Whoa. Mm. Definitely think you'd be the best if you won four trophies. <gasps> Myrna is the captain of her soccer team. Whoa! Myrna has the most friends, more than anyone else in her grade. Wow! Oh my goodness! Look at that head, it's getting bigger. It is getting bigger. Oh my goodness. 
Myrna has the longest hair out of all her friends. Mm -hmm. And Myrna has the shiniest hair out of all her friends. Ooh. Oh my gosh, Myrna, your head's getting so it big. It is getting so big. Oh, look at that. <laughs> oh, I know. Myrna is the favorite student in her teacher's class. Oh, that's a big one. Oh. There's a lot of kids to choose from. Uh huh. I'm worried that this is going to... <laughs> oh. mm. What else about Myrna? What else is she filling her head with? <laughs> Myrna is the best out of her brothers and sisters. She thinks her parents love her more. <laughs> That's a silly thing to think. I can't even see anymore because Myrna's head's in the way. <laughs> I know, right? It's filling up this whole room. Right? Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> well, <sighs> Myrna's head got so big that it exploded. Oh, that was scary. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I didn't like my head to be that big. <sighs> that was very scary. In fact, what are some consequences when we brag about ourselves too much? Mm. Well, our head isn't going to explode for real. That's true. But it might make us not a nice person. We mm. might start being mean to other people. Mm -hmm. And we, we might not remember any of the good things that others have done. We might only remember the good things that we've done. Mm. And that reminds me of what we mentioned earlier, that the focus will just be on me, me, me. We won't remember God or anyone else. That's sad. Mm. So we started by saying that Myrna was famous. And in our Bible story, the people wanted to be famous too. So what's so bad about that? Is it wrong to be famous? Let's dig into that. Let's dig deeper into our Bible story. Let's look at some famous people in the Bible and what God promised them. One was Abraham, who was an old guy who really wanted a son. The other was David, a shepherd who later became a king. So we're going to read from Genesis chapter 12, verse 1 to 2. Now the Lord had said to Abram, Get out of your country from your family and from your father's house to a land that I will show you. I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great and you shall be a blessing. Wow. Let's read the other verse from the second book of Samuel, chapter 7, verse 9. Okay. Now in this passage, God is talking to David. Which verse did you say, Amy? Verse 9. Verse 9. And I have been with you wherever you have gone and have cut off all your enemies from before you and have made you a great name, like the name of the great men who are on the earth. Wow, hmm. that's interesting. God promised to make Abraham and David famous. That makes me wonder if being famous is a bad thing or a good thing. Let's see what else the Bible says about them. Before we read these verses, you should know that Abraham was also called Abraham. So now I'm going to read from the book of Romans, chapter 4, verse 3. Hmm. For what does the scripture say? Abraham believed God and it was accounted to him for righteousness. So Abraham was a righteous man because of his faith in God. Let's read another scripture verse from the book of Acts, chapter 13, verse 22. And when he had removed him, he raised up for them David as king, to whom also he gave testimony and said, I have found David, the son of Jesse, a man after my own heart, who will do all my will. Wow, beautiful readings, aren't they? Based on the verses we've heard so far, would you describe Abraham and David as good people? Well, yeah, God made them famous. That's and true. for the right reasons too. Why do you think God would want to make them famous? Let's look at how fame impacted one more person. Ooh. Jesus. <laughs> We're going to read from the Gospel of John, chapter 1, oh no, chapter 7, sorry, verse 1 to 9. Okay. After these things, Jesus walked in Galilee, for he did not want to walk in Judea, because the Jews sought to kill him. Now the Jews' Feast of Tabernacles was at hand. His brothers therefore said to him, 
Depart from here and go into Judea, that your disciples also may see the works that you are doing. For no one does anything in secret while he himself seeks to be known openly. If you do these things, show yourself to the world. For even his brothers did not believe in him. Then Jesus said to them, My time has not yet come, but your time is always ready. The world cannot hate you, but it hates me because I testify of it that its works are evil. You go up to this feast, I am not yet going up to this feast, for my time has not yet fully come. When he had said these things to them, he remained in Galilee. Thanks, Rania. Mm. What do you think Jesus meant when he said it wasn't his time to go and be famous? Mm. It kind of sounds like the people around him weren't ready for him to be famous. Mm -hmm. They weren't ready to see what he was going to do. Okay. Mm -hmm. Would you consider Jesus famous in our world today? Hmm. Jesus' brothers wanted him to be more famous, but Jesus had a special plan for how he let the world know about him. Today, a ton of people have heard about Jesus and know how great he is. Jesus' heart revealed he wasn't just trying to show off. He was pointing to God, even before people realized that he is God. Think about the verses we read about Jesus, Abraham, and David. And let's remember our balloon, Myrna. <laughs> oh. <laughs> How would you compare those famous people we read about with someone like our balloon, Myrna? Why do you think God wants some people to be famous? Well, I think with David and who was Abraham? Abraham? Abraham. They used their fame to do good things, to do God's work. I don't think our balloon was doing that. That was all about themselves. True. Okay. So, fame can be a platform to reflect to Jesus, to others, okay. when we give credit to God. Or it can be a way to point to your own greatness, like it was for our balloon Myrna. Remember how happy our balloon Myrna got every time she did something really good? Her head kept getting bigger and bigger. Okay. But like we saw with Myrna, pointing to our own greatness doesn't end so well. Listen to this. We're going to read from the book of Proverbs, chapter 16, verse 18. Pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. Hmm. What does this verse mean? That doesn't sound too good. No. no. Sounds like... Pride, which is having filled your head with a lot of things about just yourself, mm -hmm. can bring you down and not bring you closer to God, but further from God. Mm. That's true. That's a good explanation, Myrna. Mm. Tell about a time that you saw an example of this verse happen in your own life. I've got an example. Mm. Remember earlier when we were doing that little experiment with the bubbles? Mm -hmm. That's yeah. cool. <laughs> yeah. Well, the first one, we, when we poured the vinegar, it poured over and the bubbles disappeared really mm. quickly. And that represents us being away from God because mm. the bubbles didn't last long. But when we done the second experiment, we added some detergent, which was our secret ingredient and which represents God, and the bubbles lasted longer. They lasted longer because we were doing it in God's name. So That's a good example, mm. Myrna. Mm. Okay. Well, let's think a little bit more. A lot of us may never be famous on a worldwide level, but fame can happen on a smaller scale. You might be famous in your school because you're popular, or you're in a leadership role in your sports team. Those are all small examples of fame, but we can still use them to give glory to God. Hmm. Now we're going to meet a new character, a new balloon character. This time we'll name the balloon Erica. Okay. Mm -hmm. Erica, here she is. There she is. <laughs> Erica is a regular kid, just like you. So let's think of some things a kid like you or your friends might do well. Mm -hmm. Oh, I can think of something. Okay, so Erica is really good at her schoolwork. Mm. Something she does well. Yes, her head's getting. <laughs> oh, but right. now. Let's change it up and let's think how can Erica give glory to God for being good at her schoolwork. Hmm. What do well, you reckon? 
Maybe Erika can thank God for helping her to concentrate while she's doing her schoolwork and getting it done. That's a great example. So maybe we'll let some air out. Oh, okay. okay. Hmm. What's something else that Erika or other kids like you or your friends can do well? Well, Erika might be really good at playing soccer or a different type of sport. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, her uh -huh. head's getting bigger again. Well, let's stop it there and let's see how can Erika give glory to God for being really good at the sport that she plays. Hmm. I think I know. Maybe she can thank God for helping her to always make it to practice and learn a new skill each time. Yeah. Let's some air out again. Uh -huh. Okay. Hmm. Erika looks a little different to mm -hmm. our balloon Myrna. Yeah, she <laughs> She's still intact. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so it's not so bad to be famous and it's not bad to do things well. But like Erika, we can give credit to God for His greatness in us. God is the greatest and we don't need to be. It's not about showing off ourselves or trying to be the best. It's about showing off God. When we do that, we keep things in balance. Unlike the Myrna balloon, Erica is in no danger of exploding. And when we show humble hearts that give glory to God, we'll have more balanced lives too. <laughs> the end of our lesson and here are three things that we've learnt. Well, remember earlier when we were doing our experiment with the bubbles? Well the second time we'd done it there was a better uh, uh, there was a better results and because we added the detergent which represents God same for us when we add God to our lives in all that we do our results come out better. And for me the balloon activity helped me to learn that when we have too much pride in ourselves, our head can get bigger and bigger and we forget other people and we forget God. So if we're more like our second balloon, Erica, we'll always remember God and thank Him for all the gifts that He's given us. And well, I learned some differences between our earlier story, the Tower of Babel, and Pentecost. Mm. So remember how they wanted to build the tower so that they could make a great name for themselves? But God didn't like that they were trying to be famous and trying to be better than other people. So he confused the languages. But when we look at Pentecost, God gave them the gift of languages because he knew that they would use those gifts to spread the word of God and to help people to know God more. And that's a good way to use a gift. Thanks for joining us and we can't wait to see you next week. And remember, if you did the experiment along with us at home, send us your photos. We'd love to see them. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share. Bye! Bye.